Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting day of looking at monitoring reports. Um, we've been working on this project now for a few weeks, collecting samples from a number of kind managers who've offered to share their uh, work with us, trying to call out uh, ideas, styles, formats that have been really working for them and their boards, and incorporating them into this set of template policies, or policy reports, rather. Um, for those of you who haven't been attending uh, the earlier sessions, this is Michael Healy uh, of the CDS Seabuild team presenting. Um, I encourage you to go back, if you haven't already, and look at the presentations from the previous reports. Also know that the uh, report samples themselves are available on the Seabuild uh, website. Um, if you follow the link to the GM report support, you'll find these policy reports there. What we're going to do today is we're going to go through and look at uh, two um, reports. Both of them have to do with the manager's relationship to the board. Um, and so both are uh, full of both uh, really good ideas about how to present a monitoring report, but also you'll notice full of some really good ideas about the manager's relationship to the board and how different managers have refined that. Um, we mentioned in the first presentation of this round uh, some research that our CDS team had done showing a, a, a correlation between um, the, the sense of the health of the board GM relationship and the sense of how uh, managers were reporting to their boards. So we want to continue in that vein, showing how good reporting, good communication really is integral to building a good relationship. So here we go. The first report today, um, uh, based on our C-Build template policies, is about the communication to the board. Um, again, I'll just mention real quick, uh, in these template reports, I am showing primarily um, compliant um, monitoring reports. Um, but there, there's a good example of how to, how to present a report where you have a non-compliant situation. And you can look in the first B1 policy for an example of that. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the formatting that is the same from one report to the next. Really, we're encouraging very clear, very concise formatting. And you'll see it show up thematically throughout all these reports. Um, what I'm going to do is as I go through the report, uh, I'm going to just point out a few of the highlights, some things that, uh, again, either either focus on the presentation, the style of the report, or about certain choices that the manager is making uh, in order to create that excellent relationship that we're talking about. Um, the first one that I want to mention, uh, or overall I, sh I should mention um, in this comment here, is that throughout the report, um, I'm presenting examples based on what I read and learned from these other managers. Um, but as always, whoever is supplying the report, if you are the manager, it's your job to decide what your interpretation is, what operational definitions you're going to use. Um, what I'm presenting are what I believe to be um, reasonable and sometimes really excellent interpretations and definitions. But that doesn't make them right. It doesn't mean that you need to choose them. Um, real quick, this. Uh, report shows that um, this manager is not going to make any more detailed definition of the overall global policy. Um, once you read through the sub-policies, it does seem like the, the global policy is pretty well defined below. So this is a case where we're not going to put in anything extra up here in terms of the definitions and data. So that simplifies the reporting work right off the bat, and we will him on down to um, the first um, part of the uh, sub-policies. As you are um, going through and looking at this uh, and listening to the comments, if you have questions about any part of this, um, we encourage you to use your, um, your GoToMeeting uh, toolbox to indicate that you have a question or a comment you'd like to make. Um, and uh, in a moment, I'll, I'll uh, take a break and, and give instructions on how to do that and encourage you to participate. 
Um, so your comments, questions are always welcome. Uh, for right now, the um, first sub-policy here is about monitoring reports themselves. Um, and, the, and this policy essentially says to the GM, make sure you get them to us on time, make sure they're accurate, make sure we can understand them. Um, what I found in the monitoring reports, um, the samples that some managers were sending, um, that uh, clear, the clearest way to um, show compliance with this policy is really to use the board's own data. Um, most of the boards that are using this model are keeping track of their monitoring work um, using something like a monitoring summary table. You'll notice that at the top of this um, report, we included, uh, or at least said we included, um, that summary table as an attachment. In general, that table is something that uh, the board is responsible for keeping, maybe the board secretary or the board administrator. Um, it, I did see one good example where the manager himself was keeping that data because the board was not. Whoever keeps it, it's a great set of data to include. And what it does is it pretty much says right off the bat, um, all the data for this policy, for this report, is in that table. Um, so the table would include both the date of the submission of the report and the board's acceptance of the report. And the manager here is just saying, if the board accepts the report, then that means you all, board, you thought they were accurate and understandable. Pretty straightforward. Uh, in the second sub-policy, this is about making sure the board is aware of any non-compliance situations um, and making sure they're aware of it in, in a timely way. And so there were, uh, as I was around, there were really three um, primary ways that, that managers had of showing, um, giving information to the board about uh, non-compliance um, to give them timely information. Uh, the first is the monthly update report. The second was the regular monitoring reports themselves. And the third was, um, in the case of serious uh, non-compliance, um, that the manager would just give the board president a heads up immediately. So those were the three ways, um, and again, if you think about practice, um, not just about the reporting style, but about how managers do their work, uh, you'll see this really covers the manager's responsibility to keep the board informed pretty well. I also want to point out that this monthly update report, I've been seeing more and more good examples of how managers are um, not as part of monitoring, but as part of just this regular check-in, providing a written report to the board that has information that's really pertinent to what the board is asking for. That's not just a laundry list of um, interesting or fun things that have been going on operationally, but is giving uh, clear um, information to the board about things the board wants to know about. And you'll see throughout this report, uh, this sample today, several, several places where that monthly update report is referred to. So keep your eye out for that. Before I go on too far, I want to just make sure that um, you all who are listening in have a chance to um, ask questions or make comments. Um, and I want to um, introduce uh, Joel Brock, who's here with us as our um, support person today. Maybe, Joel, you would introduce yourself and uh, let people know how they can um, participate in the conversation if they have a question or a comment. Of course. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Joel. And I'm here for tech support and other um, useful useful things. So if you guys do have any uh, feedback or questions that you want to pop in, pop in during the discussion, we welcome that. And you'll notice uh, if you look at your GoToWebinar toolbar uh, on the side there, there's a little round hand icon that you can click, and that effectively raises your hand, and then we'll see it, and we can. Um, pause and take your question or comment. Uh, you also have a question box. You can type in a question if you'd like, uh, or if you just want to pop into the conversation, as I say, we welcome that. Feel free to just raise your hand, and we'll, we'll try and squeeze you right into the conversation. Great. Thanks, Joel. And as always, I encourage you to ask questions, uh, have comments about anything you see here. Um, here we go. This, again, as I was saying, the monthly update report, 
uh, is an important part of how managers are communicating to their boards. So you hear, see this three-pronged approach to um, keeping the board informed about this policies about noncompliance. And presenting information here in these um, tables um, is a nice, concise way of presenting data that boards can read. It's very understandable, very clear, and very concise, simple. Um, I was noticing in those different styles that managers are using, there's um, several managers who have really gotten good at getting data in this very clear format rather than a long narrative, um, which both might have the same information in them, but this is a much cleaner, clearer way of presenting that information. So here, first, anything, um, the, the, the monthly update report, any not times that the manager mentioned noncompliance there. Second, any times where the manager mentioned noncompliance in the regular monitoring reports. And thirdly, any time that the manager felt it was necessary to call the board president. In this particular sample, um, I didn't make up any uh, any particular instances of that, but if you had, you could include them in your report. Very clear, very straightforward. Again, this kind of information would be something you could keep track of easily over the course of a year, 12-month monitoring cycle. Uh, number three here, the sub-policy about um, trends is uh, keeping the board aware of things that might really matter to the board. Um, again, the, the a major part of the toolbox that managers have available for that is the monthly update report. Um, but in this case, um, point out just real quick that there's a variety of ways that the manager gives relevant information to the board and to remind the board of that, that, that this, is, this is your chance, manager, to remind the board that you are giving them information on a regular basis and they should be aware of that and reading that information with this in mind. So there's the regular monitoring reports. There is the business plan. Um, and the annual plan. There's the monthly update report. There's the chance here, um, if there's a confidential uh, issue, um, the manager can report on that in executive session. Um, and if there's something urgent, the manager can contact um, the board or the board president uh, through email or phone tree or whatever system you all have. These seem to be the primary tools that managers are using to communicate to their board. Um, so then you can then see, again, the data, um, which reports included historical or trend information. That's one place where the manager can give this information. Now, these examples come out of um, the policy monitoring templates that I've been uh, presenting over the past few weeks. And when I went back and looked at them, um, I realized, was I wasn't surprised, but I thought, well, look at this, all these places where trend information is being provided in these reports. Um, and again, helping boards see that long-term big picture uh, can help them do their job in, in terms of being aware of uh, that larger role of the board as opposed to the day-to-day -day management. Um, again, the data here, each data point connects to the operational definitions above. So there's a data point about the business plan, about the uh, monthly uh, update report. Um, if there were any times where you did have an executive session where you were presenting information to the board, um, you can remind the board when those happened and what the topic was. Uh, and if there were any times where the manager did decide to communicate directly uh, to the board or board president um, about specific issues. Again, what you see is up here, one, two, three, four, five operational definitions. Down here, one, two, three, four, five data points to go with that. Uh, so policy number four, uh, the board is asking the manager to help them do their job the way they've said they'd like to do their job. So essentially saying, manager, please let us know if you think we're not doing what we've agreed to do. Um, the manager in uh, rather than trying to do that verbally, um, uses the monthly update report. Uh, that's the example I found that I thought made a lot of sense, using the monthly update report to, if I, if I do see something, I'm going to mention it here. I'm not going to just mention it in passing. Um, and again, that provides the record that the manager is doing this work. Um, and then in this case, this is just a, a sample, an idea of, of what it might look like. If you were always telling your board, if you had many times over the course of the year, you could put that data in a, in a table, as in those other tables. Um, 
here was one where uh, I saw a couple different variety, a couple different ways that managers had uh, tried to address this policy provision about um, not favoring um, or privileging um, individual directors over anyone else. And uh, what seemed to make most sense is, is the couple managers who essentially put it back to the board that said, um, I'm going to assume that I'm in compliance with this policy unless you all tell me different. Um, and so that if you, if you all as directors see something that seems untoward, I'm counting on you to tell me. Um, and so the, the manager basically said, compliance is determined by you all reporting to uh, me or the board president of anything out of compliance. Um, I, I thought that was just a, a brilliant uh, twist, kind of like taking this policy up here about the, the board asking the manager to let them know if they're out of compliance. The manager is essentially doing the same thing to the board. I'm going to assume that what I'm doing is OK unless you all tell me different. Um, very nice way to, to approach that. Um, and lastly, uh, using the consent agenda, um, one of the things that I think really uh, can help here is to try to alleviate confusion over consent agendas. It seems to be a perennial question among directors and maybe even some managers about what a consent agenda is for. Um, what I found is there's this very uh, clear uh, definition that came out of some work of John Carver's. Um, although a consent agenda isn't necessarily a policy governance um, tool, it does work well within that context. So Carver talked about it. Um, so reminding everybody what a consent agenda is about. It's not about approving minutes, the board minutes. It's not about um, accepting monitoring reports. It's about looking at stuff that's been, that the board has delegated to the manager, but that someone outside of the co-op expects the board to be uh, taking care of. So uh, here are some examples um, that I found in the various monitoring reports. And again, these examples um, would only make sense if, if this was your requirement as a manager. There are some bylaws that require the manager, that require the board to approve uh, new members. There are some bylaws or articles of incorporation that require the board to um, approve uh, that return of equity. Um, so those were two that I, I mentioned here. Um, you might have those requirements. Um, thirdly, this is the catch-all. Other, other things that require board approval, the bank might require board approval for opening accounts. Um, I've seen insurance companies require a board resolution to do something with insurance. Whatever those are, this is your place to mention, remind your board that you did provide them to the board at board meetings. So this one, this policy, all about communication, making sure the board is informed. Um, and again, it is a good format for communicating. So it's, it's kind of a, the, the meta report. It's the communicating about communication. Hopefully you can keep all that in, in your brain as you're working on it. Nicely presented. Um, I'll take just a second here to see if there's anyone who had a question about um, any part of this um, that you'd like to holler about before we move on. Doesn't look like we have any questions right now. That is so good. I must be communicating clearly. So let's take a look at the second report of the day, which is the report about supporting the board, logistical support. So the previous one is about communicating to the board, and this one is really about making sure the board has enough administrative support that, that they can do their job. Um, I want to point out, just in terms of formatting, that all of these reports show um, what this reporting period is, what is, what is it that the manager is reporting on. You want to make sure you're clear to your board about that. In this case, there are no attachments, but I still mention that there's no attachments. Uh, again, that's a standard formatting. Everyone knows, every director knows what to, what to look for when they're looking at these reports. So again, we're just going to go through this one relatively quickly, point out some of the highlights. I encourage you to go back later and read it more thoroughly and see which parts of this you can incorporate into your own monitoring work. And again, I want to thank the, the managers who um, supplied reports for, for me to, to look at. In this particular one, I found um, that I pulled pretty strongly from Tim Bartlett at Buffalo, uh, Buffalo Lexington Co-op in Buffalo and from Glenn 
uh, Bergman at Weaver's way, um, both of them had a couple things that I, I thought really made a lot of sense in this particular report. Um, the first one was this statement right at the top um, that I read in, in Tim's one of in Tim's report, um, where he basically said, "Yes, I'm going to provide administrative support. I'm responsible for that." Um, but just everyone, please remember to, to notice that um, it's my responsibility, even if I delegate that to another person like a board administrator. Um, and so the manager is really trying to keep clear those lines of delegation. I really I thought that was a, a, an excellent caveat to to uh, remind people. And again, there's no no particular other um, specific definitions or data in the global report here. Uh, so we start off with making sure the board has enough administrative support. Um, and I, again, you see here this reiteration of um, supervising uh, only by the GM. I just want to take a quick break. Joel, I'm noticing a lot of background noise. I'm not sure if that's something that you're aware of or if it, it's, um, maybe it can be fixed in, later on. I'm hearing a lot of different things. Um, OK. Thank you. Um, our uh, template report here basically shows two definitions um, for uh, the for the, the operational definitions. One is just basically saying to the board, "I will make sure there is one employee who's the board administrator." Um, and then second, and this was uh, the part that I, I saw out of um, Tim's and Glenn's report, they had a similar approach, um, something like this, essentially saying that. Um, I'll count on the manager speaking. I'll count on the board president and secretary. Um, and there were some variations on how Tim and Glenn were doing this. But I'll count on the board president and secretary to uh, let me know um, if the administrative support is sufficient. So rather than the manager trying to make up the criteria and uh, figure it out, um, basically saying that if it's working for you all at the board level, then it must be working OK. So the data is just naming the board administrator and um, these two managers um, were using a questionnaire um, that was aligned according to the, the job description um, or a list of desired activities or outcomes, outputs that the board had created, wherever it comes from. Um, it's pretty straightforward. This is not a job evaluation. Remember, the, the manager is solely responsible for that. This is just the, the board president and secretary's chance to weigh in on do they believe these things are happening sufficiently. A really nice way to present this in a, um, a concise way, again, showing everybody what, what the expectation is for the board administrator. Um, the second sub-policy here about supporting the board is making sure that the board has some workable mechanism, some way that, that they can use to communicate with each other. Um, and with their members. And so in the interpretation, um, the, the manager here uh, talks about both internal communications, the, the communication between directors, and external communication um, between the board and the members or the community. Um, so those two kinds of communication the manager is focusing on here, um, and then breaking that down into the operational definitions, getting more specific. The first one is about how the monthly meeting packet is, is handled. Um, second one is about archiving those meeting packets, making sure they're available. Third, uh, in this case, making sure that directors can access the secure uh, areas of the web page where archives are kept. And fourth, publishing uh, on behalf of the board um, articles in the newsletter or on the website. Um, and this uh, note that these are articles authorized by the board president, because elsewhere in the board's policy, the board said only the board president is authorized to speak for the board. So anything that goes out publicly, the manager's saying, yeah, I'll put it out as long as the board president says it's OK. So tying, tying the definition to what the board has already agreed to. Uh, so again, looking at um, supporting communications, uh, by making sure meeting packets are prepared, um, that the web page contains the information that would help the directors go back and look at past information, um, and then a summary of what were the articles that were published. Again, 
presented in tabular form, very straightforward, very clear, um, and again, a way to have directors look at this table and say, gosh, look at that over the course of the year. Here's what we published. Here's what we put out uh, to our members or to the community. Nice way of presenting that. I was giving particular credit to Tim and Glenn today um, just because I did draw on some of their ideas, but I, there were a number of managers um, who I won't try to name all right now, but I, I hope they do know that their efforts have been very, very uh, important in this project from day one, and I'll be using more of their work uh, next week also. I'll tell you more about that. Okay. And still, as we go through, if you have questions or comments, feel free to raise your little electronic hand there and uh, weigh in. I'm going to keep on going with number three here, the sub-policy. Um, pretty straightforward. In this case, the manager didn't even try to interpret it. It's just so straightforward. Um, just make sure that everybody, all the directors, have a policy register in the bylaws. Um, but then the definitions are, are very specific, um, giving new directors the board notebook. Um, with the policy register and bylaws in it before their first meeting, making sure directors um, have hard copies of policy revisions as they happen, and thirdly, making sure that the electronic up-to-date versions of policy register and bylaws are available on the website. So here's a way of presenting the data. When did the director come on to the board, and when did they get their board notebook? And if this date here is earlier than this date here, that's pretty much complying with the policy, uh, or with this definition of the policy. Um, again, just summarizing what happened over the course of the year, which policies were revised, and when were they included in the meeting packets. Um, and then here, just letting directors know that they can go and look themselves and see that information on the website. There's no other, there's no need to do anything more specific in this data point. Um, this one, uh, providing information from the board to the members, so along with publishing board articles, there's just that ongoing information about board activities that the board wants to make sure members hear. And um, the manager is acknowledging that this is really an important uh, thing that should happen in a democratically controlled cooperative, and so the manager has created this half dozen or so uh, definitions of what that means to make sure members have enough information. Um, so I'm not going to go through and read all the definitions here. You can go uh, look at them in more detail yourself, but I do want to show this way of presenting data. Is um, In this case, it's slightly different than, than previous ones. And rather than going through one by one by one um, with different data points, the manager has compiled all this information into one table. Each of these um, uh, rows aligns with one of the operational definitions above, and basically in each of those operational definitions it would have said, um, does that information belong on the web page, does it belong on the bulletin board, the newsletter, the governance binder um, that's mentioned up there, um, and if it does belong, when was it last updated? So again, I'm not going to try to go through all the details of what's in the table or in the operational definitions, but a, a nice way of tying um, the specific uh, definitions to a, a clear, concise presentation of data. So here you go. You have it in a nutshell. A manager can communicate clearly to the board and can communicate about that communication to the board, can remind directors that they are getting good information on a regular basis and that they are supported in their work. Um, if the, you don't have board administrative support, well, we certainly encourage you to to uh, look at that as you have resources available for boards who do have administrative support. This policy is a great way to control that and to get information about that. So that's it for today. I'll hang on just one second to see if there's any particular questions about these two reports. Uh, doesn't look like we have any questions from the audience. All right. That's a very happy audience today. Thank you all for that. I do want to invite you to return next week for our final installment of this series where we will be presenting a template report on the uh, manager succession policy and on the global executive limitation policy, um, two reports that just promise to be incredibly exciting 
encourage you to come back for that. And as a bonus, next week there's going to be a really special edition, um, and Joel is going to provide a tutorial um, for those of you who are looking for support and how to add, how to embed um, charts and graphs into your uh, monitoring reports. Um, our, our trusted sidekick here, Joel Brock, is going to give you a, 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 a real good tutorial on that. So I hope you all will come for that. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thanks for your time and attention. I wish you well as you put together your reports to your board. And hopefully you'll keep us posted on, on how they are working for you and your board. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much. And we will see you again next week.